Today I want to talk a little bit about inequalities and specifically in this video we're going to talk about solving inequalities that involve absolute value functions. So what I want to remind you of is that a solution to an inequality is a region in space. And in fact, what we're going to see is that when we solve inequality, inequalities that involve absolute values, we can find ourselves in one of a few situations. We can find ourselves looking at an absolute value of something that is less than or less than or equal to some constant. This is equivalent to the statement that negative, the negative of that constant is less than or equal to x is less than, sorry, is strictly less than the way that I've written this, c. Now, if we have a less than or equal to clear, obviously that's not going to go away. This is one possible scenario. Another possible scenario is that our absolute value is greater than or greater than or equal to some number. And that translates into a two-part solution. In other words, you've got two non-connected regions. This is kind of like a no man's land. Um, one of the examples I use for this is when two siblings are riding in the back seat together and parents finally get frustrated and they draw a line down the middle of the back seat and say, nobody approaches within three inches of that line. That gives you a no man's land that nobody can cross. And that is kind of what we're talking about here. And of course, if you've got greater than or equal to, that carries through as well. Now I want to make sure we can write these in interval notation as well as at inequalities. And in interval notation, our first scenario is negative c to c with parentheses. And if equality is allowed, you're going to have brackets. The second scenario with the no man's land, you end up with a two with a with a jump. So you come to negative infinity up to but not including that negative c. And then you jump over a region, come back down at positive c, and go up to infinity. And when equality is allowed, you use brackets next to the C's. Okay, so let's, let's work a couple of examples. Let's solve absolute value of x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. So our first step in this will always be to isolate our absolute value. In this case, it is isolated already. And so we can simply consult our table to see which version we've got. We've got absolute value greater than a positive number. So that's going to put me in this scenario. And I'm going to write that, that this is equivalent then to x is less than or equal to negative 3. Or x is greater, sorry, not x. Hmm. You have to use what's inside the absolute value. So x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Or x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 3. Now I reverse those orders, so I'll fix that for you. There we go. So now this looks just like the fourth row in our little table up there. So now what? Well, let's work with the leftmost 
inequality first and solve for x. So we'll add one to both sides and we get x is less than or equal to negative 2 or add 1, x is greater than or equal to 4. Or in interval notation, this is negative infinity to negative 2 unioned with 4 to infinity. And so what this means is that any x less than negative 2 or greater than 4 will satisfy the given inequality. In other words, it will result, that value would result in a true statement if we substituted it in. All right, let's try one that's a bit more complicated. Let's try to solve 4 minus 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay, now that negative on the other side of that inequality might be bothersome to you, but we're not done yet. So don't panic about it yet. What we're going to do instead is isolate the inequality. So we're going to start by subtracting 4 from both sides of our inequality. And we get negative 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to negative 6. Now we divide through by negative 3. And we get absolute value of 2x plus 1. Remember to reverse the inequality because we divided by a negative number. Is less than or equal to 2. Alright, so now if we go back up and look at our table... This is equivalent to the statement that negative 2 is less than or equal to 2x plus 1, less than or equal to positive 2. We can work this three-part inequality just as we would a two-part inequality. It just means that what we do in one place, we have to do everywhere. So... I'm going to subtract 1 in the middle and subtract 1 on both ends. And that leads me to negative 3 is less than or equal to 2x, which is less than or equal to 1. Divide through by 2. And negative 3 halves is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 1 half. That is our solution. In interval notation, that would look like negative 3 halves 2x, whoops, sorry, nope, negative 3 halves to 1 half inclusive. And this is the answer. So any x between negative 3 halves and 1 half will satisfy our original inequality. All right, I hope this has been helpful. In the next video, we, were we will talk about inequalities with quadratic functions.